Hey guys, Tommy Bryson here, and for this video, all you're going to need is a piece of paper, a pen, or marker if you want to, and just a calculator, and on top of that, also a little envelope, or five of them if you have them available to you. And a little credit card here on the side, just for some design and aesthetics. Now, the whole goal for this video, guys, is to give you guys a cash budgeting system, and by actually using envelopes, okay? Because envelopes is the way that I learned how to budget when I was making $60 every single week, and now I make around, well, $23,000 every single month. So it's a big difference, but it's still the same exact same system. So let's get started without further ado. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you get notified because I also do post videos every single day on YouTube. And make sure to smash the like button. It really helps a lot. Thank you guys so much. So here we go. The very first thing is that this entire budgeting system is broken down into six different categories. Each category is basically like your own little envelope. And that's why I said you need around six envelopes. So that's envelope one, two, three, four, five, and six. But that is all you basically need six envelopes and the categories are very simple here they are right here all you need is for one is for emergencies two is for investments three is for debts four is for expenses and five is for fun and lastly is for charity now don't worry charity is not going to be like a huge hole in your pocket it's going to be something that is very manageable but before we can find that exactly our job here is to find out how much are we going to put in for every single category okay to find this out we're gonna have to find out the percentage of your expenses First. So to figure this out, all we're going to need is a little T-chart. If you don't have one of these, just grab a blank piece of paper and like put like a, a cross and that's basically all you need. You don't need to be fancy like I am right here. But all you want to write is basically on one side your income, and I'm sorry for my handwriting, and on the other side your expenses, okay? And that's how we're going to find out exactly how much money is going to go into your expenses envelope okay so to figure this out we're gonna have to write down exactly how much money you make every single week by the way if you make money um bi-weekly it's the same exact thing so don't worry okay so here we go so here is my check that i got paid and i got paid a thousand dollars every single week and no my name is not john smith but you get the point, right? So $1,000 every single week. So on this side of the T-shirts, I'm gonna write down, well, $1,000. And it's okay if all you literally get is one income stream, that is fine, don't worry about it. So now we know for a fact, I make $1,000 every single week. And on top of that, my expenses range from, for example, my rent, I also have my light bill, I also have my internet bill, Food, transportation, or transpo, Netflix, Spotify, Apple Music, clothes, entertainment, and that's basically it. So for rent, I pay around $1,200 every single month. For my light, I pay $100 every single month. For internet, I pay around $50 every single month. For food, well, that's around $200. Also for transportation, that's around 130 bucks. By the way, when you're writing this list down, you might have a lot more expenses or a lot less expensive. The point is you wanna have not a lot of expenses and you wanna have a lot of income, okay? So if you don't have a lot of expenses, that's a good thing. A lot of expenses though is not a good thing. On top of that, my Netflix bill is around $8. My Spotify bill is around $10. Apple Music, $10. Clothes? maybe like 50 bucks every single month. And by the way, this is done monthly, not weekly. This is, however, weekly, okay? However, if you wanna do monthly, just times it by four and you get $4,000 every single month, okay? Entertainment here, I spent around $100 going on dates, watching movies and stuff like that. And on top of that, I almost forgot my phone bill, okay? So altogether, my expenses are 1200 100 50, 200, 130, $8, $10, $10, $50, plus 
plus $70 add up to a whopping $1,928. And my income is $4,000, which means I do have money left every single month after I get paid, okay? So that's actually a very good thing. Now, if your income is negative, meaning that, for example, you spend more money than you make, well, that's actually not the best thing ever, but if it's like that, what you wanna do is start crossing things off left and right until you kind of just keep what you need, which is basically like rent, light, internet, food, and maybe like um your phone bill. That's all you really need to survive, okay? So there you go. Everything else you can afford to cut out if you are negative. Now to find out exactly the percentage of your envelope for expenses, to find this out, all you want to do is basically divide expenses by your income. So grab this number right here, 1,928, which is the sum of all your expenses, and divide it by $4,000, which is your monthly income. Whatever your monthly income is, it's fine. Just do the exact same thing. So divide it by $4,000, and we actually get around 0.482%. Tommy, what is this, okay? Well, to get the answer, all you have to do is just times it by 100, and that gives you the percentage of around 48.2. All you really wanna do now is just round it up to the next percentage, which is like 49%, and then boom. So when it comes to expenses, automatically, we know that expenses is going to be automatically 49%. Now, what does this mean, guys? It means that after all your expenses have been paid, you're left with around 51% of all your income to put into the different categories that you have right here. Emergencies, investment, debt, fund, and charity. Now, for a second step here, guys, let's break down exactly how much you need to put down for each and every single envelope. Expenses, we know is 49%, so now let's move on from that, okay? So here we go. By the way, if you don't have any envelopes at home, that is fine. What you can do is you can actually print them out like this. It's like a, like a little um, template. You can actually print out this template and just make like your own envelope at home or go to the dollar store and just buy like $1 for 20 envelopes and then boom, you save all the time of cutting and having to do everything yourself, okay? So now guys, for part two, all we're going to need to do is basically just fill in the percentage for every single other category, okay? Because the only one we know to this point is 49%, which we know about because we found out exactly what our expenses are divided by our total income, okay? So we found that out. Now let's find out exactly what it is for emergencies, investment, debt, fund, and charity, okay? So when it comes to emergencies, what you wanna do is basically off the bat, just take 10% of your income and put it towards your emergencies. Why 10%? Because 10% is a very good number, not too high, but also not too low. Now, the only rule is this, okay guys? If you are putting in 10% and you make $1,000, well, you times that by 10%, which is going to give you around a $100 in this case, okay? So that is my math right here. So $1,000, times 0.10%, well, that's $100, which is like 10%. So the answer is this, okay, guys? When it comes to emergencies, it's a temporary account. So what this means is you're not gonna have this here forever. So what you want to do is basically grow your emergency fund until it hits six months worth of your expenses, which in this case, we know that our expenses are $1,928. So we know for a fact that $1,928, well, times six months is going to be around 11,568. So that is $11,568 total for your emergency account. Now, I know this looks like a big number and it is, trust me. However, to find it exactly, well, how long is it going to take me to save this money up? Well, the answer is very simple. Just divide this by how much money you're putting into emergencies every single week whenever you get paid. In this case, 10% of 1,000, my paycheck is $100. So divided by $100 right here is going to give me around 115 paychecks or 116 paychecks. Now, if I wanna find out the time, just divide it by 52, 52 weeks in one year, divided by 52, 
and that gives me 2.22 years. In the first year only, guys, I'm going to have saved up around $5,200 just in case anything happens, okay? Which is awesome if you ask me. So it's all about getting started and then step by step you grow it. Now, a little tip is this, guys, okay? Once you're done with all of this for emergencies, what you basically want to do is put the extra money. So once you're done with emergencies, what you want to do is put all that money into a high yield savings accounts because you don't want to keep that money at home because basically what happens if your house burns down or somebody steals it from you, you want to have it in a bank account, a high yield savings accounts, and that way that money is stored and saved up, okay? Now, you're obviously going to have 10% left over, okay? So what are you going to do with the 10% that's left over? I'll tell you guys later on in the video. So right now we found out emergencies and expenses, okay? Now let's go into investments. Well, the math for investments is even more simple, okay? And here's why, because again, it's just going to be another 10%. Now, the goal for investments is what you want to do is invest into things that are going to give you money back. That might be, for example, your 401k. It might be investing into Acorns, into Robinhood, into stocks, into getting a new degree, into whatever you want that's going to give you money back. But my only rule is this, okay, guys? Whatever you put in money into, it has to give you money back, and on top of that, it cannot be super risky. So the math is very simple, guys, okay? Every single time I get paid $1,000, I times it by 0.10, which gives me 1%, and that is going to be $100 towards my investing um, envelope, okay? Which is awesome if you ask me, okay? Now, one tip is this, guys. When it comes to your investments, what you want to make sure is this. For the first year, you probably won't know exactly how to actually make money, and that is fine. So what you basically want to do is, you want to invest this money into courses, into classes, into seminars, into buying books, whatever you can actually do to actually learn how to make the most money out there. So again, we're going to take $100 and put this money into my investment envelope and also hundred dollars and put it into my emergency envelope and here's hundred dollars right here and i'm gonna put it over there basically okay or over here there you go even better okay so there you go now when it comes to debt guys and how much money do you put into debt well it's very simple for this equation right here i decided to put around 25 percent of all of my income towards paying off debt now you might wonder tommy why is it that debt paying is literally more money, I spelled that wrong, I don't know why, but why is it that debt paying is literally more money than investing emergencies and doesn't it sound like debt is less important? The answer is no, because debt usually costs a lot of money every single year. So what you want to do is pay down that credit card, pay down that car loan, pay down that student loan debt that you do have. If you have a mortgage, that's different. It goes into your expenses. However, any other loan or debt that you do have, it goes into debt. So in this case, if you make $1,000, well, you know, $1,000 right here times 0.25, which is 25%, is around $250 every time you get paid. By the way, this is a ton of money because this, every single month, is literally going to be, well, times four, that is going to be a $1,000 that you put in towards debt every single month. Now, for example, guys, say I owe $8,000 on this one credit card right here. You might say, Tommy, that is a lot of money. The answer is yes, it is. However, if I'm putting down literally $250 every time I get paid 25% of my income into my debt and I owe $8,000, well, in reality, this money is only going to take me, well, $8,000 divided by $250 is only going to take me around $30 two paychecks which is awesome if you ask me and if you want to find out how much is this weekly this is around almost six months so in six months you're eight thousand dollar debt free and that's why putting money into your debt is so important so again when it comes to your debt you're going to want to put in 
25% of all the money you make. Now you're probably wondering, well, Tommy, expenses, I already know. Yes, you know that, okay? That's awesome. But one little tip I wanna give you guys, you wanna make sure that all of your expenses that we know, you wanna make sure you put them on auto pay. So put your internet on auto pay, your food bill on auto pay, put everything you possibly can on auto pay, and also use a credit card if you want to and if you can, and that way you also get extra points. But the point is you wanna put everything everything on auto pay and that way you don't have to think about it anymore. Now, when it comes to, well, Tommy, what about fun? By the way, fun is by far my favorite account, okay? But for fun, you're basically just going to put in around 5%. You might think, Tommy, that's not enough money. I want to go out there and have more fun. Well, that's why I also included entertainment and stuff like that in your expenses and that way you have enough to actually have fun and stuff like that. Well, you know, in reality, 5% is actually not that bad, guys, okay? And here's why. Because if you're making $1,000 every single week, well, in reality, 5% of this is going to be around $50. Now, for people out there that might say, Tommy, well, what about Christmas? Or what about vacation? I can't go on vacation for $50. Well, the answer is, those are usually long-term fun expenses. So what I would do is very simple, okay? I would only spend half of this. So divided by two, I would only spend half of this. So I would spend 25 and I would all, and I, would, <laughs> I don't know why I'm writing like this, okay? So I would spend 25, but at the same time, I would also save $25 for one year. And at the end of the year, well, 25 times 52, which is one year, well, it's actually $1,300, which is enough money to go on vacation, enough money to spend money on Christmas, whatever you wanna do. And that's why I also save half of my fun money to go on vacation. And here's actually the money I spent to go on vacation um, this year, which is going to be $645 to go to the Dominican Republic. And I saved this up by doing the exact same thing by the end of the year. And I have extra money to go on vacation, to have fun and buy whatever I want. And that's why, I only put in around 5% when it comes to my fun money, which is enough if you ask me. Now, lastly, we're going to have your charity. Tommy, I don't have enough money to give to charity. Well, in reality, once you're doing all this stuff, you figure out very fast that you do have enough money. And so far, if you haven't counted, we have 10%, 10%, 25%, which is 45%, plus 49%, plus 5%, which is only 99%. So all we have left is literally 1%. And that 1% is going to go into charity. You might say, Tommy, charity is going to have to be a lot more money. In reality, no. Because if you're making $1,000 every single time you get paid, well, $1,000 times 0 0.01, which is 1%, well, that's $10 times four, every single month, you're gonna be paying around $40 towards a charity of your choosing, and $40 can literally go out there to four different charities, or two different charities, for example, Feed America, or Feed a Third World Country, or Help Kids that Are In Need. The point is, this is definitely enough, so. It costs 50 cents to feed one hungry child for one full day. Try share the meal today. Overall, guys, the idea is to have a 100% set out, and this way you do. And once you do this, guys, eventually what will happen is this. Eventually, your investments will start to pay for all of your expenses because your investments will make you more money, which is awesome if you ask me. So eventually, that's the goal. But once you're done with emergencies and you're done with your debt, you wanna grab this 35% and put that all towards your investments, which is going to make it around 45% only towards putting that money to work, which is awesome if you ask me. And then eventually, the more money you make, the more fun you can have, the more you can give to charity, the more you can actually spend on things you actually need. But the point is, you can't do this without actually building up investments and cutting out your debts and also making sure you have emergency account because any anything happens, you will be secured for at least up to six months. And guys, that is basically it for this video. And if you enjoy this video, make sure to like this video. On top of that, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you get notified. And if you want to watch another video, for example, on how exactly I build my emergency account, here it is right here. And on top of that, click my face right here to also subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. And as always, peace.